Hey guys, I'm back. Okay, uh, so a lot has happened over the course of the last couple of weeks. Um, I got to go to, first of all, let's talk about Air Venture. I got to go to Air Venture, got to take my dad Air Venture. Uh, that was so very, very cool. Uh, first of all, all the people that I met up with while I was there, it was excellent meeting you. I'm super, super happy to have shaken some hands and got to put names to faces together. That was really cool. Uh, it's a little weird when you're walking a crowd of thousands and thousands of people. There was a lot of people. And just having someone yell out your name. Uh, or, or you're like in, in your RV and you're eating dinner and someone just pounds on the door. That happened twice. Hi. Um, so yeah, that was, that was a, a great experience. I'm glad I did it. Um, I didn't get to stay the entire time. So my, my plan was to go from Sunday to Sunday. I was literally gonna, you know, drive up, be there Sunday for the Monday morning opening and stay all the way through until the end of Sunday and leave the next Monday. And unfortunately that didn't get to happen. Uh, for reasons I'm not really gonna go into, I had to leave early. Uh, it is what it is. We had a great time though. My dad, uh, I kind of walked the crap out of my dad. Uh, the first day, I think we did uh, just shy of like 12 or 13 miles. I'd have to look, it's on my watch, I'd have to go look. And the second day we did like eight and a half uh, before my dad got a little, little heat strokey and we had to go back to the RV and, and relax. Uh, he's fine now, but uh, overdid it just a little bit. Um, but we had a great time. The thing I was really disappointed about uh, of the show in general is I had to leave before the second night show and the first night show was canceled. Ugh, that sucked. We, we sat out there for like four hours waiting for the night show, just watching, you know, planes go over and do, you know, acrobatics and whatnot while we're sitting there. And we had to, uh, we had to call it because of uh, a nasty storm was rolling in. That was, that was awful. So, but I did get to see a lot of things I was really looking forward to. So, um, I was very excited to uh, go by the Vans booth and get a shirt. And I went by the, uh, all the various avionics booths and really kind of went in and decided uh, which, you know, which avionics suite I was going to get. Uh, I hadn't, I haven't made any decisions yet. Um, but I'm fairly sure I know which one. No, seriously. Um, I went by and talked to the Dynon people. I went by and talked to Garmin. I went by and talked to all of them. And, uh, I think I've decided on the Dynon HDX. Uh, the, the, the tech, the tactile response was excellent. It was bright. It was very, very, uh, high resolution. And I, I just liked it. They were really, really great to talk to. And I was really impressed with them. Uh, and, and it's cheap. It's going to be cheaper than I thought too. After kind of picking their brain about all the bits and parts, it's going to be a lot less expensive. Now you can have them like build your panel for you and literally ship you a panel and that's not cheap. But, um, I think, I think Dynon is the way I'm going. We'll talk more about that down the road. Once we get there, it might still change. Uh, but for now that's, that's the route I'm going. Uh, the other thing I had talked about previously a number of times is, is the, um, zip tips. I had said I thought about zip tips, and a lot of people are like, mm, "No zip tips. Their their uh, customer service is terrible." And I'm a big customer service guy. So if you could give me good customer service, I don't care if you cost more. I want the customer service. Well, I sat in that guy's booth for 45 minutes, talk, just talk, just shooting the shit with the guy about zip tips, and I have his home number. <laughs> so. Uh, he, he was shocked. I guess they're completely oblivious because he was shocked about their bad uh, reputation. So, so I let him know that that's something he needs to work on. He was very thankful. The new zip tips, there's actually a new version of the zip tips. They look great. And I'm probably going to go ahead and go get with those. And like I said, if I have any problems, I'll call the guy at his house. So got that. I'm going to do that. Again, that's going to be something I'm going to have to pay for. So I've got to get permission from she who makes decisions uh, and we'll probably order a set of those. But I took a whole bunch of photos while I was out there and I realized I'm not that great of a photographer. There are people out there that take much better photos than I do. But I, I really, I really enjoyed the show. I thought it was a lot of fun. I think next year when I go, I'm going to go from like Wednesday to Saturday. You know, that way I, I get there Wednesday just in time to rush out and see the night show and then Saturday at the night show, I just, you know, bail after that and leave, uh, leave Sunday. So that way it's not quite as long. Seven days is a long time to be out there. And, and yes, I think you could probably be out there all seven days and not see everything because there is a lot. But at the same time, after a while, it gets kind of samey. Um, you know, if you're just wandering through the hangars looking at all the stuff, um, there's a lot of stuff. 
and and a lot of stuff that's not even aviation related. Like, but there's some of the things that are in some of those hangars. I mean, it's it's a trade show, right? So so you'll have the massage chair over here, which would be great if I wanted a big massage chair in my plane. I, I don't know. Um, so there's just kind of weird stuff like that. You know, there's they had like statues of bears and you know things like. Why is this here? Um, they'll sell a booth to anyone who'll buy a booth, I guess. Uh, I always, I always wonder how well those people do. I mean, it's a, it's a niche trade show, but I mean, I guess when you're talking four or five hundred thousand people that wander through over the course of the week, they're bound to get some sales. So, eh, whatever. So, anyways, really good. Uh, one of the coolest things is I got to show my dad though what an RV10 was. Um, you know, you can show him pictures on you know, online and say, hey, this is what I'm building. And, and, and you can see it and go, okay. But it really didn't click until you walked up and put your hand on somebody else's plane and go, this is what I'm building. And right outside the Dynon booth, there was a beautiful RV-10 that was actually sporting some Dynon uh, avionics. And I was like, yes, this, this with that, you know, is what I'm talking about building. And he's like, oh, and it, I could see it kind of clicked. You know, at that point, he started to really realize, oh, this is a real airplane. Yeah. Uh, so that was cool. And then, of course, wandering up and down Warbird Alley, where you're seeing these, oh, God, gorgeous Corsairs and Mustangs. And there was a P-40. There was oh, so many beautiful airplanes out there. And he's like, your plane's nowhere near as good as these. And I'm like, well, yeah, I don't have $5 million to throw at a Mustang. Or I'd rather have a Corsair, by the way. Just if anyone's given me a Corsair, I would like one of those because they're sexy. Um, anyways, I had a lot of fun. I'm ready to get back to it. Um, it, it really made me want a plane, especially when you're when you're sitting out there and you just look at the sea of aircraft, of just personally built aircraft. It's like, wow, you know. I understand now why people say this is the mecca of home built aircraft. It really is. You got to go. It's an awesome experience. Bring lots of water. Uh, bring snacks while you're out wandering around because you're going to need it. Uh, I would say go like Wednesday to Saturday. If you don't want to do the whole trip, at least do night show to night show because that that's that seems to be the thing. Um, but it was it was it was awesome. It was a great experience. We did try to go get on a helicopter flight because um, my father had never been on a helicopter before. I've I've you know was in the military. I've ridden on a lot of helicopters, but he has never done that. And I was like, well, let's go do that. You know, let's go jump over in line. Oh my God, the line was like three and a half hours for an eight minute flight. I was like, you want to do that? And Dad's like. No. <laughs> so we're like, okay, cool. So we just jumped over to the museum and walked around for a while. But uh, anyways, it was a good time. I'm glad I did it. I'm glad I'm home and I'm going to get back to it. Um, today, I think I want to work on flaps. So step one in the flap building process is to go through and gather up all the pieces, bits, and parts that you need and lay them out on the table. Uh, I went through and instead of trying to protect the parts and whatnot, I just pulled all the bluing off of everything because I knew I was going to work with it in fairly short order. I also went through and did some basic deburring uh, in that some of this pressed, piece, uh, pressed parts, the, the edges are real sharp and this one I have not done yet and I can still feel that and I know some of you... I know some of you are going to freak out because I'm running my raw finger over aluminum. It's not that sharp. I've yet to be like cut uh, from any piece of aluminum. I'm not saying that can't happen, but uh, it's it's not quite that sharp. But it's still a good idea to go ahead and give it a little give it a little deburr pass uh, before you start using it, just to make your life easier. Um, and then it's about beginning the assembly process. Now, I did my best to follow the instructions, but I got, but I got a little overzealous. Um, in one step, it, I went through and I laid out all four unique parts and I drilled all four parts and I realized, oh wait, I didn't need to drill all four parts, I only needed to drill one. Follow the instructions. Someone else might take a look at this picture here and say, hey, do it, hey, wait a minute, you made a mistake. You drilled that at a number 30 instead of a number 40 as per the plans. Actually, that was intentional. Um, these, these little flange area that you see right here, those four holes, uh, those are supposed to be, according to the plans, drilled to a number 40, but I had another builder say, when you do that, go ahead and make them a number 30. Therefore, it's more rigid because it's a bigger rivet. Looking at it now, I mean, I went ahead and did that, but looking at it now, I'm not really sure I agree with that. Uh, I, uh, six, one, half, and dozen, I mean, those are just two pieces that get married together and riveted together. Uh, I guess a slight, you know, slightly larger rivet will make it a little stiffer, but I, I just didn't, I did it, but I don't think you need to do that. 
then it's just a lot of match drilling and marrying up the parts. I am actually building the left and right parts at the same time. At the beginning of the chapter, it tells you that the plans are only uh, in reference to the left flap and everything is mirrored for the right flap. Uh, instead of trying to uh, come back and do the right flap later. I'm trying to do them both at the same time and just mirroring them as I'm doing them. Therefore, it kind of makes more sense. Um, one of the options is to uh, add lightning holes to this part. Uh, and as you can see, I went ahead and did that. Normally, when it comes to optional things, I don't always do them. But in this one, I thought, eh, what the hell, I'll give it a shot. Um, the plans say that the large hole should be an inch and the two other holes should be half inch. Um, instead, I didn't have a good way to make an inch. Uh, so I went up to three quarters of an inch and half an inch. And then the smaller one is just a little smaller than half an inch uh, based on what my little steps are uh, on that tool I have. So uh, I did go ahead and do them again. Do you need to? No. I mean, the amount of weight you're pulling off there is minimal at best. Uh, but I just wanted to play and see if I could do it and make it look good, and, and it came out pretty nice. And in the end, while I'm working on the background, spoiler alert, I made both the left and right center hinge brackets uh, for the left and right flap. Uh, they came out just fine. I'm happy with how they came out. Uh, they are kind of weighty, but I mean, those lightning holes, I, 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 I should have weighed them before I did it just to get some idea of how much weight it actually removed. It couldn't be very much. It's aluminum so light. Uh, the one thing I problem I did have is finding, so this is a, a AN4-7 bolt and I went through all my bags. I, I was searching forever to find this one bolt. I'm like, what the heck? I know it has to be here. I inventoried everything and uh, wasn't there and I was looking through all the fuselage bags, getting frustrated, realized, you know, eventually I realized, wait a minute, this is a wing part. Uh, that's the point at which I know it's time to go home. <laughs> so uh, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to head home and come back out here tomorrow and actually like assemble this so we at least see all this stuff put together. So I'm going to be doing the rest of the uh, normally green screen work that I stand in front of the camera and I talk to it. I'm going to be doing it from here for the rest of this video. Just don't have a lot of time lately. I got a lot of irons in the fire. I want to try to get these videos out. This, this video is really late in coming to you guys because of Oshkosh. So uh, I just thought I would do it this way right quick. I am going to continue to do it the green screen way. Uh, but for this, the rest of this video, I'm just going to do this as a voice overlay. I hope you all don't mind. And with that, what I'm going to be doing uh, this part of the video is I am actually working on the ribs. So the flaps have a number of ribs. Uh, I think there's 12 per flap. I don't recall. I'd have to count them again. But you have to clip off the end piece. Um, and you can see right here in this picture, um, there's the one on the left there is not clipped. The one on the right is obviously clipped and rounded. And really, it's the only time I think I've ever found a use for these shears. Um, I bought these shears because, you know, it says in the uh, various guides for equipment that, you you know, they, they say you're going to need, that you're going to need a pair of these shears. And I, I've never needed them. Uh, typically, you know, the the bandsaw works great. You just, just put everything on the bandsaw. That sucker does everything you need. But there was just no good way to use the bandsaw here. So, yep, these actually came in use. So there you go. Uh, you're going to need these clippers unless you can find a better way to bend or, you know, bend them and then cut them or something. I don't know. My hand's kind of in the way there. But... Yeah, this was actually a really good way uh, to clip these things, and it was the only time I've ever really needed these things. And there is a buttload of them, like I said. So I go through and I clip all of them using those uh, shears, and then I take them over to the grinder and I begin cleaning up. Uh, again, deburring is a thing you're going to do, and you're going to do a lot of deburring. Uh, that is kind of your lot in life. And um, I can't tell you the number of times where I have sat there and I thought, do I really need to do all this deburring? I mean, really? And I, I don't know, honestly. Sometimes I think, no, not really. But I still do it. Um, just because I would hate for, you know, that one thing I didn't deburr and I have some catastrophic failure in flight, right? That wouldn't be good. So, uh, yep, I deburr. 
All right, and then once I check with the plans to make sure I'm still doing the right thing, I go ahead and I get the spars for each flap and pull all the bluing off those, do a little deburring work on those, clean up the edges as, as those flanges can have those little cut marks, uh, clean those up and get them ready to start putting all the parts on. Uh, something else you'll see me do is I'll actually mark uh, each of the spar as to which one is left and which one is right. These spars are actually identical, I believe. Um, uh, no, that's not true. They're not identical. The, there's a slight slant to them. That's right. That's why I had to mark them left or right. So, so you do need to remember which one's which. Uh, there are parts that are identical. These just happen to not be. So uh, definitely mark them because the last thing you want to do is screw that up. And then for the rest of this video, what you're going to watch me do is actually assemble the flaps. Um, now, I go through and I assemble the ribs and whatnot on both the left and right flaps. I get them you know, to the, to the point where I thought I was going to be done for the day. Uh, but then I went on and I, I actually finished uh, fully assembling with the skins the left flap. Um, one thing you're going to watch me do here is a lot of drilling. So a lot of what I have to do is once I put the ribs on and those nose ribs, uh, you have to do a lot of match drilling of the various bits and pieces to make sure all the holes line up. And once you have match drilled a specific rib to a specific set of holes, that's where it's going to live forever. So it's not a bad idea to put a mark on there or something so that you have some notion of what piece goes where for when you take it apart and do your final deburring because that is going to be a thing. So yeah, fun. One thing I did have to do is once I got this skin uh, in place, I had to kind of flip it around a number of times because I wasn't exactly sure how it was supposed to go on there. Uh, the the f uh, is outboard part of the flap actually kind of flares outward slightly, which confused me because I, I, I don't know, for whatever reason, I, I thought I remember it flaring inwardly when I looked at someone's plane. Obviously, I was incorrect. So it took me a little while of measuring and figuring out exactly, hey, how do I flip this skin? But once I figured it out, it all came together perfectly. I was like, ah, okay, it all, it all lines up. So yet again, thank you, Vans. You can't actually do this wrong. Uh, there's only one way it will go together, and they thought that through. And there are so many examples of that. Uh, even the ribs, you can only put those ribs on one way because uh, some of the holes are slightly offset, so you, you literally can't make a mistake. You, you'd have to, I don't know, what you'd have to drill holes to, to, to screw that up. So uh, well done, guys. Thanks for that. You're making it bulletproof. And finally, uh, that's it. That's all I did. I, you know, I cleaned up the skin edges as I could, as I normally do when I use a piece of skin, and I got everything all clecoed into place, putting a cleco about every third or fourth hole, just to get a good idea of how this thing's going to uh, go together and make sure everything fits together. Typically, if it's wrong, you'll see a big bubble in the skin or something. You know, doesn't quite fit together correctly. Everything went together perfectly, and I'm super happy with that. So uh, next time I go out there, I'm going to start doing the dimpling and the final assembly of this particular flap and I'll begin uh, the final assembly on the other flap as well. The flaps came together really quickly. I was actually really happy with that and and I liked seeing progress. Uh, I think that was something I've missed a little bit is you know the lack of progress especially with the tanks. I mean it took you know it took me forever to put the tanks together and it just you know the, it's one of those things that I need progress and I need motivation from you guys. Thanks you guys <laughs> to, to keep me wanting to do this thing. So anyway, that's what's going on over there. I can't wait to get back out there and continue working on the other flap. And uh, with that, guys, that's where I'm going to end this one. I really appreciate all of you. If you do me a favor and hit that like and subscribe button over there, it really helps my rankings. If you want to get a notification every time I upload a video, just click that bell button. It'll send you a message. And uh, if you really want to help me, you can jump over to my Patreon page. And just for as little as a dollar a month, you guys can help support this channel by donating a dollar. You're buying me a cup of coffee over the internet. And you're just basically telling me that you really like what I'm doing here. And if you really, really want to build your own plane, and you absolutely can, if I can do this, you can do this. Uh, when you uh, order your first kit, you, you know, order an empennage kit or something like that, if you use my reference number, which is down in the comments below, Vans will send me 100 bucks, just as a way to say thank you. It's no cost to you. So with that, guys, thank you so very much. Uh, I can... We'll have another video, I hope, this Sunday. My goal, my goal is to continue posting every Sunday. That seems to have been working pretty well so far. And uh, with that, Sadie says goodnight.